The Lord be with you. We welcome everybody here to our second Sunday of Advent. Our, our season is last week was the focus of on hope. This week we have the candle, uh, candle of peace. Today we also encounter uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, uh, and we look at uh, what uh, his role in this whole Advent preparation. Tenants booklets are found at the end of your pews. If you haven't had a chance to fill those out, please do so. Our intention forms next week will be the last week that we'll be collecting those intention forms and so forth so get a chance to fill those out there are extra copies there on the um, in the uh, uh, narthex area christmas program practice begins today that'll be after after the service we'll have another practice next week and then on the 19th we will have one service at nine o'clock uh, and that will include the christmas program plus uh, a worship service. There are a few Advent booklets in the back. You can still pick those up. And we do have our Advent midweek um, um, services this week also. Uh, and also, we have a baptism today at the second service. So please pray for Adeline Hudasik, who will be baptized, God willing, uh, in the second service. Are there any other announcements? We sing our first verse, on Jordan's bank the Baptist cry, we rise for the last verse, which is uh, on verse five, but we stay seated until the last verse. <laughs>
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. To call an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. But my people did not listen to my voice. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Be in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. On this second Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And the fruit of his presence is peace. Christ comes to bring justice, wholeness, and harmony to every relationship throughout all creation. He wants to continually grant us peace in every situation. Jesus, we pray, guide our feet into the path of peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. First reading for this second Sunday of Pen of um, Pentecost uh, comes to us from the last book of the Old Testament. It speaks about John the Baptist, whom God would use to prepare 
and refined us, buying God's people for the coming of the Savior. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift witness against the sorcerers, against adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. For the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Yet you have brought us out of a place of abundance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second, our epistle reading, comes. second reading comes to us from Philippians chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. Uh, there is joy in the community of faith, uh, and there is the promise that the one who brought this faith will keep us strong to the end. Uh, and we pray that uh, the prayer here is that in the community of faith, love will continue to increase. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God and all my remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. We rise. Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Here we hear the voice of John the Baptist. He is called to repentance, faith, and a changed life through the coming one. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea, and Traconius and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priest of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. 
And the crowds asked him, what then shall we do? And he answered them, whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what shall we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation, and be content with your wages. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The children may come forward at this time. to each of you. I want you to do this as we start here. I want you to take your heads and I want you to look at your stomach, okay? And keep looking at your stomach, all right? Still keep down there, don't look up. I'm doing the same thing, okay? So is that fun to do? It's kind of, what if you were walked around and you kept looking like this? You'd run into people, wouldn't you? Okay? All right, you can look up. All right. So. Part of the problem that we have is we're so busy looking at ourselves, we don't look up to who? To Jesus and to God, Jesus, and other people, and loving other people. We're so big like this. And so that's called sin, all right? There was a guy that came along. You guys might know him here. You guys know who that fella is? He's John the Baptist. Let's say that together in the count of three. One, two, three. John the Baptist, okay, he came along and he said, I want you to change, uh, change your life, to stop looking down at yourself and look at the coming Jesus and change your life with other people. Now, John the Baptist, this is where he, this is where he preached. This is the church he was at. What do you think of that? Looks different, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the wilderness. There's nothing out there. And that kind of reminds us that without our Jesus, there's... There's really not much in life, but Jesus has a lot to say. So he went out to the wilderness, and do you know what? Lots of people went out to hear him. And he did. here's what his message was. We're going to look at the next one here. What's that word say? Repent. It says repent. And you notice the cross at the end there? There's a cross. And repent means, okay, let's go put your, put your uh, face down at your stomach. Means look up and look this way. And look this way. Change your life. Look up to God. Look this way. Stop looking in at yourself where sin is at. All right? So he said, repent. And what does this bring? Peace. Now, do you notice what's below that? What does that look like? It has to do with Christmas. The manger. Yes. Peace comes from Jesus who comes in the manger. He's the one, the reason we can look up and we can be happy. He's going to take us to heaven someday. He forgives our sins. And we can also, it says Jesus is our peace, not only because of that, but because he went to the, Andrew, what is that there? To the cross, and he rose again for us. Right? Yep, he died and he rose again. All right, so he's our peace. So he's all about, that's what this candle is. Last week we talked about the candle of hope, and this week is the candle of peace. And how does that happen? John takes us from looking at ourselves to looking up, looking out. 
to God. You got it. All right, let's fold our hands and we'll all join in our prayer. Dear God, you sent John the Baptist, who said, Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Help us to look up and look out. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, we sing the next hymn. unto each of you from God our Father and from our Advent King, uh, Jesus the Savior. Our text today is from Malachi 3, but we're also going to go to our Gospel reading uh, all about John the Baptist. Virtually every year I come to this second week of Advent, I know what's coming up, and I kind of pause uh, and think about, boy, it would sure be nice to talk about something more pleasant uh, than John the Baptist, something more pleasant to contemplate and discuss. Think of it this way, if the sound of the Christmas season are all of those Christmas carols and Christmas music, John the Baptist comes in and gives us the noise of a construction zone. You know the sound of jackhammers, nail guns. That beeping sound as the vehicle makes when backing up. <laughs> it's quite a contrast to the Christmas sound and to the nostalgic Christmas music that's all around us. For the most part, when you're driving along, we don't like seeing construction zones. And when you're in the middle of a remodeling project, I'm not sure many people are too excited about that. When was the last time you drove uh, on, on the highway and came to a construction zone and said, why, that's fun. <laughs> we just went through that. Or in that this isn't going the way I thought it would go remodeling project saying something similar. Any construction or even remodeling project is not for the faint of heart. It is disruptive. Lots of dust. Cost overruns. And yet you hang in there because in the end, something better will result. At least that's what you hope. Roads will be smoother. That extra closet and new kitchen will be of great benefit. It's what keeps you slogging through 
those construction times or remodeling projects. Calling the crowds, the world, to repentance Saying things like this, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. This may not sound like a construction project, but rather a destruction project. If we admit we are wrong, and we have failed God and others, and there's no excuse, we think. And the world thinks that one will be destroyed. What do you have left if you don't have that to sort of defend yourself with? And in our world, this is despair. And the worldly view on things seeps into the life of the believer. I sense, and I have a hunch you do too, that there's a good deal of despair or borderline despair around us. Whether it is all things pandemic, the response and so forth, race relations. Most polls now say most people don't like where a country is going. It's usually in the upper 50s or close to 60% say they're not too happy with where we're going. I'm sure you've heard or seen things in the past couple of years and you simply have you shaking your head, muttering something like, I cannot believe this is happening. People are acting in such a way. Something is not right in our world when unborn child is a burden and not a gift made in the image of God. Something is not right that so many feel ending that life is the best option. Something is not right when Variants like Omicron keep us from moving forward in this pandemic. Despair or borderline despair. We're all part of this destruction project. That's what it seems or feels like. When Malachi was written, many of God's people wondered this. Where is the God of Jacob? Where is the God of justice? Excuse me. And the God of Jacob too. Where is the God of justice? Malachi was the last book of the Old Testament. Hadn't spoken much until John the Baptist came along. At the time of Malachi, they thought they should have been doing better. They looked around at the Persians, and they were prospering, and they were a wicked, unbelieving nation. And God was not doing a thing about it. Wasn't addressing it either way. Was just silent, or so they thought. God's people were burdened, while other believers, unbelievers, were rejoicing. In effect, they were saying, where are you, God? Are you just going to sit there, do nothing? What they didn't realize is that God would come all right. He would do something. He would call them to something, but not in the way they expected. He comes, though. Not to do a destruction job on us, but a construction job that starts not with those folks out there, but rather with you, the people of God. God wants to do a construction job on us, a retooling, not to destroy, but to rebuild, remodel. You got to rip out the old pavement, tear down the walls, bring in a lot of dust to make ready for what is new. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we can admit we have failed God and others as hard as it is. But here's the good news it doesn't destroy us doesn't lead us to despair because there is someone else in your life and mine if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins God is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness if we do sin we have an advocate before the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ it's in that same section of 1st John it speaks of that 
John the Baptist went to the crowds proclaiming repentance for the forgiveness of sins, not just for these people and these people, but for all people. He spoke to the crowds. Can you hear him as he speaks the walls coming down? The dust about, that beeping sound, the jackhammers. This recognition of our own accountability and responsibility before God does not mean, though, that every earthly problem and sin is our doing, right? When we get sick, it's not always because of something in us that we've done wrong. You can read the book of Job to figure that one out. When something goes wrong with someone else, it isn't always our job or our problem. This is kind of narcissism in and of itself. How much of a role do we think we actually have? in this world around us. And yet having said that, the key to this relationship is simply a, this relationship with our God is about being honest about who we are and our needs according to God's Word. This is what John the Baptist is doing. The scriptures have a lot of way of calling, of talking about this. It will talk about this as pruning right? So the plant doesn't look so good but it's necessary for it to grow. It will call it discipline it's called a construction job. It's not a dis destruction job. It's construction work. This is making paths straight, valleys lifted up, rough places level. Why? Because this is not the end. There is something coming. You know, Advent, we talk about coming, we sometimes say about three ways, two ways, you know, coming at Christmas and coming again. You could talk about it in a couple different ways. Advent is about that he has come, that he is coming to us, present, and that he will come again. There's something else. John the Baptist, the book of Malachi, it speaks truth. But ultimately it's a truth that speaks of something far greater from someone even greater than all, that's Jesus. One for whose shoes even John the Baptist was unworthy to untie. John knew that he must decrease so that Jesus would increase. As it says in Malachi, he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold. Refine them like gold and silver. Rough places shall become smooth. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. And believers will benefit from that salvation. Now, up until John the Baptist, God had not spoken through a prophet in some 400 years. John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets. The book of Hebrews speaks of it this way. Many in various ways God spoke to his people of old through the prophets, but now in these last days he has spoken to us through the Son. And what has he spoken? That while the world is not as it should be, and you and I are not as we should be, there is one coming who came to call and to bring and loves to do it. Not those who don't need a doctor, but rather to those who are sick and do need a doctor. As it says in John 3:17, for God did not come into the world, did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. It is not a destruction job, but rather he comes to build up you who have been through a remodeling job know how difficult that job was in your home or wherever it been, how long it took, the cost overruns, maybe how expensive it came to be. Yet in the end, what you ended up with, I hope, for the most part, was worthwhile. In our Philippians passage, it promises this concerning those who are being built up on this construction work. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who started it will bring it to completion. Someday, that construction sound will be no more. The sound of nail guns, and jackhammers, and that beep beep sound. That will be a distant memory from around us and in us. 
Jesus has come and Jesus is here and Jesus is coming again, the construction will be complete. And the end result is something beautiful and permanent. In the name of our living Jesus. Amen. This time we sing the offertory. We rise as the offering has come forward. This morning, we have a prayers on behalf of the family of Bruce Tice, the father of Bethany Grant, as they grieve his uh, death yesterday. And we also pray uh, of rejoicing that he is now with uh, his Savior Jesus. Also for the family of David Mertens, this is the brother of Roseanne Benzie, who also went home uh, to his Savior recently. Prayers have also been requested on behalf of Tony and Amanda Douglas. Uh, they are both continuing to recover from COVID and kind of struggling through that. So we continue to pray for them. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, help us to bear up as you prune, as you discipline, as you call us to repentance, as you do a construction job on us, not to destroy us, but rather to reconstruct us as the people who know and believe that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven and loved, both now and forevermore. Help us to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, you gather your people together in Christ and make them partakers of your grace. Strengthen the faith of those who have gathered into this congregation, that their love may abound more and more with all knowledge and discernment. Lead us to approve what is excellent and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, we thank you for the gift of Adeline, Adeline Hudasik, and especially for the blessing of water and word she will be receiving later this morning. Help her to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and guide her parents, Brittany and Matthew, in their raising her to know the wonders of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, we thank you for the life of Bruce Tice, especially for bringing him to faith in you, and also for the life of David Mertens, uh, and for bringing also for keeping him in the faith. As they now rest from their labors, give to their families your peace that passes understanding, knowing that in Jesus, death never has the final say. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, your forerunner, prepared the way for the one who is mightier than all, your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, for Christ's sake, we entrust to you those in need of healing and rescue. We pray for Tony and Amanda Douglas, Brenda Pell, Nancy Aris, Jane Stumpf, Barb Goshen, Paul Johnson, Wayne Mann, Marcello, Man Man Marcello Mancarella, Dorothy Touche, Adel Adela Garner, Becky Powers, Sean Malone, Tracy Van Leuven, Jan Hoffman, De Debbie Wilson, Ann Robertson, Paul Davis, Elaine Barthel, Chris Martin, Sandra Walker, and those we now bring silently to your merciful throne. Give them your healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we pray for the ministry of Life Network in Waterloo as it serves women and men and children and the unborn. We also pray that life from conception to its natural end will be upheld in our community, our country, and around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, during the busyness of this season, we pray that you will give us patience in our dealings with others. Lord, in your mercy. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We rise. This body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith and to life everlasting. Go in his peace and in his joy. Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn. 